In this lesson, we will look at covalent network solids and their properties in more detail. The particles within covalent network solids are atoms. In a covalent network solid, the atoms are covalently bonded to each other to form a large network that extends in either one, two, or three directions. The covalent bonds are formed from two atoms sharing their electrons and are incredibly strong. Silicon dioxide and diamond are two examples of 3D covalent network solids. Silicon dioxide is made up of silicon and oxygen atoms all covalently bonded to each other and extending in three directions. Each silicon atom is bonded to four oxygen atoms and each oxygen atom is bonded to two silicon atoms. Diamond is made up of carbon atoms all covalently bonded to each other and extending in three directions. Each carbon is covalently bonded to four other carbons. 3D covalent network solids have incredibly high melting and boiling points because it takes a large amount of energy to break the strong covalent bonds. This is because all of the atoms are held together by covalent bonds, which are much stronger than the attractive forces holding the particles and the other three solids together. Silicon dioxide melts at over 1700 degrees Celsius. It is also the main component in sand, which is why you need lightning or very high temperatures to melt sand and turn it into glass. Diamond has an even higher melting point of just over 4000 degrees Celsius. 3D covalent networks like silicon dioxide and diamond are insoluble in polar and nonpolar solvents. This is because the attractive forces between the solvent particles and the atoms in the covalent network structure are so weak compared to the strength of those strong covalent bonds in the 3D covalent network solid. Therefore, the particles in the solvent are unable to pull the atoms out of the structure. Likewise, silicon dioxide and diamond are very hard. It takes a large amount of force to break the covalent bonds in the lattice. But they are also brittle because the covalent bond is highly directional. When we look at how the atoms are arranged, they have to be arranged in a specific arrangement, that tetrahedral arrangement. So once you break the covalent bond, you're changing the direction of those atoms and this causes the entire structure to break. When a force strong enough to overcome the covalent bonds is applied, the bonds break and the solid shatters. 3D covalent networks do not conduct electricity. This is because the particles within the solid are atoms, so there are no ions, and all of the electrons are held by the atom. Therefore, there are no free electrons to move throughout the solid, and conduct electricity. Graphite is a 2D covalent network that has a unique set of properties due, due to its unusual structure. Graphite is made up of carbon atoms covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms. The carbon atoms are arranged in rings that form a hexagon shape and form flat sheets that extend in two directions. These flat sheets are held together by weak intermolecular forces. These weak forces are van der Waals forces, like those found in molecular solids. As each carbon has four electrons, but only three are used in bonding to those three atoms, there is one free valence electron that is delocalized, so free to move within the layers. Graphite has a very high melting point of 3,675 degrees Celsius. And this is because each flat layer contains covalent bonds. These covalent bonds would need to be broken in order for the sheet to melt or boil.
As these covalent bonds require a large amount of energy to break, the melting point is very high. Just like the 3D covalent network solids, graphite is insoluble in any solvent due to the extended network of strong covalent bonds. However, unlike the 3D covalent network solids, these 2D covalent network solids are soft and greasy. And this is because the flat sheets are held together by weak van der Waals forces. These weak forces can break when a force is applied. And that means that each layer can slide over each other and easily be removed from the solid. This makes graphite perfect for use in pencils. That is because, of, imagine this as your pencil. As you write on your paper, one layer at a time sloughs off. And as that layer comes off, it is transferred onto your paper. And so you see the graphite on your paper where you write. Due to their greasy texture, because these layers do come off so easily, it's also often used as a lubricant. Graphite is unique because it can conduct electricity. This is because each carbon atom is only bonded to three other carbon atoms. As it has that one delocalized electron not involved in bonding, but those delocalized electrons can move throughout the layers of graphite. And as it has moving electrons, it can carry an electrical charge and conduct electricity. So in this standard, we focus on the 3D covalent networks. So silicon dioxide and diamond and the 2D covalent network, graphite. 